Hi everyone and welcome to another video. Today I have a little bit of a crafty chat. This one is less crafty, more chatty. And as you see on the title, I need a break. And I'm gonna take one. And I feel that I owe to you to come in and at least tell you that that is happening, that I'm going on a hiatus. And then I like transparency, so I also want to tell you why and how it's gonna be. I want to have a little disclaimer here and that is I am going to talk about chronic health issues and mental health issues and if those things are triggering to you this might not be the best video so skip this and know that I'm taking a break. If you want to follow me to see when I post again. You can both follow me on Instagram, but you can also head over to my blog and you can join my little uh, email newsletter thing. I don't spam there. Uh, it's just basically posting the blog post that I recently post to your email. So if I continue working on my blog and not on my YouTube, you can still see my creations. And as soon as I start working on my YouTube, I always have a coordinating blog post so you can get it there. Just so you know, if you want to continue following me while I am on my hiatus. And also find out when I come back because YouTube is a little bit bad of that. If you go away, they won't tell the people that you're back. That's a thing. It's been a thing for a while. Let's get into the meaty part of this. If we start on a little bit of a lighter tone, um, I've had a rough six months. I don't know how that light, light that is, but I have had a rough six months and I was super excited to go back to YouTube in January. I was so excited to make videos again, to make posts. And I knew that regularity is important. Sadly, consistency in a higher grade is also important to be able to get Anywhere on YouTube you need to post weekly, but almost two or three times a week. So I looked at my schedule, figured out that two videos a week would be a good thing. And then I have one card so that I got Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I thought that would, that would be a great thing. And it worked in the beginning, but as the weeks went by, I started to have more and more symptoms started to have issues with joint pain which I haven't had since my hysterectomy uh, in late 2020. I also started having more issues with my tummy. I have gained over 10 kilos in six months. I have gone from a small A cup to a C cup in boob size and 10 kilos does not do that to you. That is something else. And I have, have a couple of other issues. My migraines has been very intense, um, gotten a little bit worse. So like gradually I just have been feeling sicker. And when you feel sick, you kind of lose energy. There's only so much you can do to gain energy, like moving, eating good, resting. You do all of those things. But when you're chronically ill, we all know that you only have a defined amount of energy and it's not easy to fill that back up. So if you use more energy than you can in a day, it can take you a week or weeks to get to the same state back again, which is an issue, a big issue. And I've been running uh, 150 miles an hour, been ignoring all my symptoms, which is a very bad habit, but I just didn't want to go back to doctors. I just didn't want to deal with the whole health system. So I just put my blinders on and just ran. I have a full-time job. It's a really, really fun job. I really enjoy it. However, it is very, very stressful. Yeah, it is. That's, th that's just how it is. And it's been a lot of organizational changes. And that is the only kind of change that I just have a very, very hard time to deal with mentally. I need stable, I needed to be stable in my life to be able to handle a very moving 
kind of job profile. I'm a developer. Um, I'm also a tech lead. So not only am I taking care of the people in my team, making sure that they do what they're supposed to do or what they enjoy to do, I also make sure to uh, that the code base is good. And with any product that is out in the world, you usually you do little features and sometimes you have to pivot because the company pivots. And then you have all of this code that you just put on a shelf and you have to deal with that change constantly consistently and I'm pretty good at doing that but to do that I need to have like a stable work environment now I work from home so that's a little bit stable but I've been there has been big changes in management and how we do things and all of that is extremely stressful for me uh, so I have gradually gone into this depression and then April came around and I deep dived into my depression because I started getting papers from my doctor saying that I had new appointments. I'm not very fond of going to doctors because I've had a lot of doctors that just didn't listen, didn't understand me and didn't want to share information they were very selective of what information they wanted to share they didn't understand that i needed that information to be able to deal and some of them has been just crap they just haven't done their job so just going back to the doctors in itself is a little bit rough but the big thing that really made me spiral was that i got a notice that i needed to go in and have an mri and that is because Five years ago, I had an MRI. They find, found an abnormality on the MRI. It's a teeny tiny one, and it is a suspected prolactinoma due to me having heightened prolactin levels. A prolactinoma is like a non-cancerous tumor. It produces prolactin, and it can grow. I, as I have been coming sicker and sicker throughout this month, I just have brushed it off with, well, my prolactin level has probably gone up. So the issue with my boobs, probably that. I have lactation. I've had lactation in my boobs for three years now. Uh, and I can't even get pregnant because I had a hysterectomy. Uh, but I've, I have had it for like three years now. Uh, so I know that it exists, but it's still there. And then they grew um, and then I gained weight. Um, and then I started to get some differences in my stretch marks from the weight, color-wise, that just isn't the way they should look like, and a few other things. So I've, I've just kind of said, well, it's just prolactin. It's just heightened prolactin. When the prolactinoma gets big enough, they're gonna remove it with operation. I can't have the medication I'm, uh, I have. Uh, tried every, everyone and they just doesn't work for me. Uh, the side effects are too big. It makes me, it makes me aggressive, like change my personality. Do not like that. The only thing was operation and they were so small that they didn't want to do anything about it. And then the MRI came and I started to worry because what happens with the results? And I felt that it was a loose, loose, loose situation because of the doctor that I've had, my endocrine doctor that I've had, she just didn't want to believe me in what was happening, what how I felt. And it took her until last year, I think, to understand that I actually had lactation. I'm like, this is how it works. Oh, you, yeah, yeah, I told you last time. It's still the same way. And she's like, oh, yeah. And also I had had my hysterectomy, so no longer could the issue be due to any other issues even though i've been in menopause since i was 30 so yeah <laughs> i'm not gonna go into being angry with my doctor but anyhow i was really really worried because of her because i knew that if it had shrunk she would probably just drop me uh if it was the same size she just wouldn't do anything about it and if it was big i would need to have a brain surgery which also, it's very, very scary. I had all of this anxiety. I went and had my MRI and then I didn't hear anything. And it had gone a month. 
in the beginning of this week, I contacted them say, hey, uh, have you gotten the results yet? What are the results? A doctor called me yesterday. It's a new doctor, which I'm very happy about because he seemed very straightforward. He seemed very nice and he seemed to take my symptoms in a good way. I found out my MRI hasn't changed. It's just as it was. We don't have any tests to look at, see if the prolactin level has risen or anything, but we suspected that it hadn't. However, all of my symptoms actually falls under his umbrella of being an endocrine doctor. So he's gonna send me some tests or so that I can go take some tests. However, to be able to take them, I need some like medication I need to take just before. Uh, so I have to wait for that to be sent and then we're gonna test a few things. I'm worried because he took it so seriously. That is one of the reasons why I'm super depressed right now. I don't have as much stress, but I'm very sad. And it's, it's not a, like, I'm going to deal with this in the way that I deal with everything. I'm gonna let myself go through the grieving period because I don't know when I'm gonna get the results. So you have to deal with it now, even though I can't change anything, even though there is so many uncertainties. I'm, I'm going to deal with this right now that this is what I have and then when I get to take my tests and I get to reconnect with my doctor we get to talk about things again and I get to go through this period again. That's just how it is. So for me it's going through grieving period, grieving the person I was, grieving that I'm sick again and just accepting where I am. And it takes time. I'm feeling a lot better today than I did yesterday. Yesterday I basically cried all day. I still cry, but it's not as rough. That's a good thing. The symptoms I have fall under a lot of different diseases. Uh, so for me, it's very hard to kind of pinpoint. And I think it's very hard for my doctor to pinpoint until we have more tests. But the thing he is looking at is uh, struma, for example. If my the thing here somewhere is, is growing or, or what it is, uh, if I have too much of that hormone or too little of that hormone. Uh, the other thing we are looking at is if I have adrenal fatigue or if my adrenals just have died. That can happen when you have a long time juice of cortisone and I've been treated with cortisone since 2013 due to connective tissue inflammations. I have lupus. Uh, I have a very very kind lupus. It's not that bad. It's, it's treating me pretty good but uh, I can't eat the medication that is supposed to be like a helper medication. So I have cortisone to reduce the inflammations in my connective tissues. And for me, co the connective tissue that is affected specific specifically for me is where the muscle meets the ligaments. So I don't have joint pain. I have pain just around the joints. <laughs> so it feels like joint pain, but it's not like rheumatoid arthritis or something like that. But yes, yeah, so I've been eating cortisone for a long time and when you do that there is a possibility for your adrenal glands to just stop producing cortisol, which is the natural version of cortisone. And when that happens you need to change the medication because it can be both you need to change the medication but also uh, if you are getting under very high stress, like if you have an accident or you get very sick, the medical profession needs to know that because you have to counteract the cortis cortisone, you have to add more cortisone so that you don't go into like adrenal shock, I think it's called something like that. So there's a few different things that can be wrong and I won't know anything until months. Months, it usually take months because uh, if the first tests that I should be doing like in the week or two doesn't show anything, I'm going to have to go through more tests and I'm going to have to do more things. And yeah, it's how it is. But it also means that mentally I am pretty exhausted and 
I need to take that time to allow myself to just back off from any outside work pressures and stresses. And even if I love making YouTube videos because it's the fun thing I know, um, making craft tutorials is a pressure because I need to upload it at a certain schedule. So I'm taking a break. I'm taking a hiatus. I don't know when I will be back. I will continue making videos though. The, here's the thing. One thing I've been missing throughout this past six months is to make vlogs basically. Day in a life vlogs or videos like this where I sit and chat, sit and chat about a topic. And I've been really, really missing that. I have an idea how I want my videos to look like, but I haven't sat down and really kind of planned them out as I should. Uh, so I haven't make it, made any vlogs for six months and I really miss it. And I was looking back here like a year ago, I was looking back on all my vlogs because I was celebrating 10 years on YouTube, not on this channel, but like overall. So I went back on, on my first channel and looked at those vlogs. The first time I was in Florida, uh, meeting some people, stuff like that. And I felt, I wished I had more footage from it. I like, there's so many fun things there. And I want to see if I can make, go back to at least like weekly vlogs and show my life and all my hobbies and all my dreams and all my travels. I'm gonna travel a bunch. And those things makes me happy and helps me process like mentally because I do a lot of videos where I just talk to the camera and then I delete the footage, but mentally I have been talking to someone. So I've been taking my thoughts out of my brain into the camera and figured out things. Uh, and even if no one else sees them, that is therapy for me. So that helps. So I'm going back to making videos and talking to the camera, but not here. Because here is just crafting and I need a little break from it. That is my little chatty video. I'm sorry if it's a little bit of a downer and I'm sorry I'm disappearing, but I will see you when I see you. And until then, I hope you have an awesome day. Have, find something happy to, to do, something to do that makes you happy. But yeah, I will see you later. Bye.